and say, Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. I escaped work because I need to finish the story and talk about two of the last units that are going to be in the 20 million downloads pickup summons, which is going to be Jack the Mole, which is going to be up by the time we hit day roll when this video releases, and uh, Nido Chris, who is on Wednesday and will be gone by Thursday the 2nd. She'll be, she's here for a very short time, not a long time. So, let's get right into it, starting with Jacques de Molay. As I have uh, messed up their name further and further, the more times I bring it up. Anyway, there she, here's Jacques. Uh, she is a foreigner. She is uh, two quicks, one arts, two buster. Five quick, three arts, four buster hits. I don't know why I didn't say hits, excuse me. Five quick hits, three arts hits, four buster hits, and five hits on the extra card. Her active skills are Veiling of a Depravity A, increases party's attack for 3 turns, increases party's critical damage for 3 turns, charges party's um, MP gauge, and then grants the party the evil alignment except for self for 3 turns. It's 20% attack, 20, 30% crit, 20% MP on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Shroud of the Turin, Fake B. Grants self invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge, and then grants invincibility to allies with evil alignment except for self for one attack one turn. NP is 30% on a cooldown of 6, and her third skill is after an upgrade, after a strengthening, which I don't think is... Nope, it's only in Japan at the moment. Um, so I'll go over the Japanese one and then say what currently NA has. Gains critical stars every turn for 3 turns. This is Innocent Monster A+. Gains critical stars every turn for 3 turns. Increases on quick performance for 3 turns, and then increases on damage against enemies with the curse status for 3 turns, and then grants self with a debuff on attack buff for 3 turns, when inflicts curse with 500 damage for 3 turns to enemies when normal attacking. The star regen is 10, the quick up is 20%, and the versus curse damage is 50% on a cooldown of 5, and if you want to know what NA is going to have until the little Harlem event, it's the exact same skill except for without the um, grant self a debuff on attack for 3 turns. So there you go. Uh, her passive skills are Existence Outside of the Domain A, Territory Creation A, Divinity B, as I quickly look and see what work email I got. One moment as I pause the video. Alright, check that work email. Let's go back. Existence Out of the Domain A, Territory Creation A, Divinity B. A pen skill for the third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude. Increases on attack against saber enemies. Uh... Because I think, funny enough, her dude version is a saber. That is correct. The arcade version, which we are never getting, because we are never doing another collab with arcade. Except for when Little uh, Harlot comes back. <laughs> and then we will likely get one of the other characters from arcade, maybe. Her noble phantasm is Vendrezi Treyes, or Friday the 13th, as it's actually known. Uh, deals damage to all enemies. It's a quick noble phantasm. Hits five times. Deals damage to all enemies. Inflicts curse status by a thousand damage for five turns to them. Inflicts evil curse status for five turns to them. Increases curse damage by on them by a hundred percent. The MP damage at level one is six hundred percent. If you get her all the way to MP five, it's one thousand. And then she also increases own MP damage for three turns. This activates first, and then on charge level one, it's twenty percent. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is forty percent. And that is Jacques de Molay, and uh, I like Jacques a whole bunch. Um, she's a foreigner, so that makes it very um, good to fight a whole bunch of different berserker types. She's a quick one. I don't think there are that many quick foreigner AoEs that come to my head right now outside of just Jacques, as far as I can tell. Uh, she has existence outside of the domain, which is actually pretty big, because if you don't have this one, it makes it very hard... For you to be able to be used with van gogh so in this case you can use with van gogh so i like to bring it up every single time because being able to be run on a team that lets you have this much uh crit damage is funny she can be used uh likely for some loop teams if you can figure out a specific way to kind of loop around with her either with using oberons and scotty or something around that way but it should be possible uh, but she also offer, offers some kind of support, which is pretty nice, um, both in the attack sense and the defense uh, the defense sense. So if depending on how you're using her, um, 
you can kind of go one of two ways. If you're doing it in like a kind of grind session kind of way, then you can use the the ability she gains from that, and that will help you out there. If you're in a more challenge quest type scenario or a type of boss fight, then all the abilities here are going to be great because they help you a whole bunch. And if you're, for whatever reason, in a team that's like, I want to just be pure evil alignment, then she's also good for that. She gives the party evil alignment, and it's in a, in of itself, she gives it to the party with her first skill. So I think she's a very uh, cool unit. The one thing that is probably a negative is that she seems to be a, uh, a jack-of-all-trades, but then she doesn't do anything that effective, as far as I can see by herself, which is probably by design, is that if every single one of these skills were just pure amazing, <laughs> then you wouldn't have to use any other unit but Jacques. But if you're someone who li definitely likes to use more like toolbox-style units, then she's going to be perfect for you for, you for that. Um, so that's very cool, and that's very nice. Uh, I kind of wish I had Jacques, but to be honest, I need to start saving up. I've already done too many, you know what, screw it, I'll throw a multi on too many of these banners that have popped up. So I'm completely tapped out until anniversary, based not even to, until Trom, excuse me, for actual Trom for when Charlie comes out. Uh, I'm all out of multis to give to random banner units, but if I could, I would definitely give it to her, because I really did like the story that she comes, she came from. Uh, which is the Liz Halloween Servant. Plus, literally, her Noble Phantasm is Friday the 13th, which is uh, cool as hell. So that's Jock. Next. And final unit, as I quickly check the, the work email to see if I'm currently needed at this exact moment. Uh, uh, I am. One moment real quick. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I, I'm never joking when I say I literally escape work to <laughs> record some of these videos sometimes. Anyway, next unit, Cleopatra. She's an assassin. Uh, the last pharaoh, which I guess no, I've never heard anyone. Actually, yes, I think I have heard people say Cleopatra. She's the last pharaoh of Egypt. But anyway, she's an assassin. Two quicks, a one arts, two buster. Four hits on the quick, two hits on the arts, and three hits on the buster on a cooldown of six. Her first skill is Imperial Privilege A, 60% chance to increase on attack for 3 turns, 60% chance to increase on defense for 3 turns, and then recovers on HP, 40% uh, attack, 50% 40% defense, excuse me. And her heal is 3000 on a cool a cooldown of 5. Her second skill is the Golden Rule Wealth and Body B, increases own MP generation rate for 3 turns, increases on MP gauge by 10% every turn for 3 turns. Then recovers on HP every turn for 3 turns. Uh, MP rate is 40%. HP regen is, is 1000. And her cooldown is 6. Her third skill is Protection of the Goddess C. Grants self invincibility for 1 turn. Removes on debuffs and then gains crit stars. 20 crit stars on a cooldown of 6. Her two passive skills are Present Concealment B and Divinity D. Her third skill is Anti Saber Attack Damage Aptitude, which is an increase against uh, Saber enemies just to really uh, stick it to her husband. And her Noble Phantasm, which uh, upgrades after her interlude, is Urius Astrape O Serpent, who ends the time of dawn here. It's rank A+, anti-army, it's buster, it hits five times, deals damage to all enemies, inflicts buff block status for one time, three turns to them, and then 500% chance to deal 1,000 damage to yourself. The MP damage at level 1 is 400%, and if you get her in MP5, it's 600%, and then she increases her own buster performance for one turn. At the single charge level, it is 30%, and if you get her all the way to the maximum charge, it is 70%, and that is Cleopatra. Um, this is going to make me very sad to say, but I don't think Cleopatra is very good. <laughs> um, I think she's kind of bolstered by the fact that there's, like, a currently on NA, like, four AoE units <laughs> uh, that are Assassin. It's not really a very popular... I think uh, the... One of the better one is uh, Hogan, who is definitely um, a free-to-play, who is quick. Um, in terms of our B Buster, I know Arts, it's um, uh, Shudin, because I literally talked about her last video. But in terms of the other one, I believe it is Semiramis. And Semiramis is also very good. And she has, well, I don't know, very good. It kind of depends on the person. I would say she is, uh, she's pretty good. But... The thing that she kind of has over um, my girl Naito over here is that she actually has the, the ability to charge her own MP gauge on a singular thing. Uh, uh, not Naito, Cleo. Sorry, they're always next to each other. Cleo 
Um, only charger charges are MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns. MP generation rate, it's a sick amount of MP generation rate, but when you only have a single arts card and two quick cards, I guess you kind of need the 40% at that case. Um, and Imperial Privilege, it's a 60% chance, and she doesn't have the ability to actually increase the chances herself to make it a 100% chance. She needs, she need my girl needs buffs. Is what I'm trying to say here. Like, this Noble Phantasm would be really nice on a unit who could bear probably better suit to it, but I feel like her kit is just way too old. Like, this ability here, Grand Self Invisibility for one turn is nice, removing the debuffs is nice, and getting crit stars is nice, but it just kind of feels quaint nowadays. If you notice here, there's no real ability to increase her attack outside of this move, and even then, Imperial Privilege has a 40% chance to fail. Which is decent enough to to make it unreliable. Um, all her cooldowns are, I think, at, are at an acceptable level, which is five, six, and six, which would make her possible for Vich type of shenanigans. But the problem is there is that, uh, like I mentioned beforehand, she, you're gonna have to figure out some other kind of ways to use it. So yeah, I don't think she's very good, which is a shame because I really, really, really do like Cleopatra. I think she's a cool unit. I've always liked her in every single story thing that she's shown up. Um, I've always enjoyed the weird little uh, humor stuff that she has. I like that she's all about loving her fat king. I'm 100% here for it. But really, her unit just needs an update, man. I love her snake. It's an amazing little snake guy right here. But she just needs an upgrade. I just don't feel like she has like what you would expect for a 2024 unit. Like... Again, a f 40... This feels better for enemies. Like, enemies use this move because they can spam it three times in a single turn. And then if they ever get at least th two hits of it, they have so much attack and defense that they're going to completely destroy you. But on a, on a regular unit, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, so much of her just needs to be improved. Um, which is a real shame. Because I think there are some people who really do think that because she is a... AoE assassin and there's not many in the game that kind of like says like well you're not going to be using very many AoE assassins so if you need one specifically she can get the job done and she does it effectively I just don't as someone who actually has Cleopatra and has used Cleopatra over the years I've always felt like man I, I just wish that they had improved they improved her at some point like it's been too many years <laughs> So many years, and on the only buff that she's ever received is on the Noble Phantasm. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It makes no sense to me. Like, I think all Buster units should be uh, upgraded to uh, accommodate for the fact that we're now in a Vich meta, and they don't have to design around Merlin anymore. Because they have a unit that says, you're not using Merlin, so I think that makes it better. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that was the specific reason why she feels so weak. I think she actually came out before merlin i don't know if they were planning ahead of her i i just don't know um but yeah if you want to go for her i encourage you to her like i said i've i rolled for cleopatra when she first arrived in the game and i've used her on and off for the years and i'm always happy to use cleopatra whenever i can but it's very far and few between <laughs> The amount of times I've actually been able to. Because the the amount of times I've been able to say, like, you know who is the perfect unit for this? Cleopatra? Almost zero. It has been almost zero. And then the few times I said, she's perfect for this. I've used her. She immediately failed on her face. <laughs> I really wish she was a better unit. There's so many, so many times I can say this before I have to get back to work. But there you go. That's why I feel. If you have a little bit more positive experience of using Cleopatra, I would love to hear it, if only so I could have a better idea of maybe how to use mine better. That'd be fantastic. But otherwise, it's better just to wait for anniversary. Uh, unless you just absolutely love her, in which case, go with God. I shine on, you crazy diamond. But that's the end of the video, and that's the last two summons on the 20 million downloads pickup summons. Were you actually able to get anything? I think I actually tried on Miss Crane, Jean, and Jean. And I failed on both of them. <laughs> Absolute failures. 10, uh, ten tickets on Miss Crane, uh, a multi on Jean, and both were absolute failures. So, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> Never again. After the good vibes of Bunyan, the vibes are gone. I'm ready for uh, saving up for Charlie and Trom now, as I wait for now for Krimhild. 
<sighs> but if you go for him again, I did see a decent amount of people went for Jolter and were able to get him, so I'm happy to hear that. Um, but anyway, that's the end of the video. I have to get back to work before they start noticing I'm gone. Until next time, everyone, best of luck to you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.